Okay, we're back in the cube. We said we were signing off for the night, but with, during the hallway track, we ran into our old friend Stu Miniman, who is the director of Market Insights at Red Hat. Stu, friend of the cube, done the thousands of cube interviews. Dave, it's great to be here. Yeah. Thanks for, for pulling me on. Uh, you know, you and I, you know, hosted Red Hat Summit before. It's great to see Paul here. I was actually, I was talking to some of the Red Hatters walking around Boston. It's great to have, you know, an event here. Boston's got strong presence. And I understand, I, it was either the first or second year they had it over, uh, uh, what, what's the building they're tearing down, uh, you know, right down the road here. It was the, the World Trade Center. Yeah. Uh, I think that's where they actually held it the first time they were here. Um, oh, we hosted the Cube up. at the Heinz Convention yep. Center. We did the, yeah, the, the Cube was a big, big uh, for Summit we at, at, the, at the BCEC next door. And of course, with, with you know, the pandemic being what it was, we're, we're a little smaller. Nice intimate event here. It's, it's great to be able to roam the halls, see a whole bunch of people, and, and lots watching online. That's great. So, it's, a, uh, it's around the same size as those, remember those Vertica big data yeah, events that yeah. we used to have here? And, uh, and I like that you were commenting out at the theater in the round this morning for the keynotes. That's more that was intimate. good. And the keynotes being compressed, I think, is a real value for the attendees, you know, because <laughs> people come to these events, they want to see each other, you know, they want to, it's like the, the band getting back together, and so when you're stuck in the keynote room, it's like, ugh, okay, time yeah, to go. Yeah, I, I don't know that any of us used to sitting at home where I could just click to another tab, or, yeah. you know, pause it, or run for, do something for the family, or a quick bio break. It's the three hour keynote, I hope, has been retired. But it's an interesting point, though, that the, the virtual event really is driving the physical, and, and this, uh, the way Red Hat uh, marketed this event was very much around the virtual attendee. Uh, the physical was almost an afterthought. So, yeah, th this, so right, this is an invite only for in person. So you, you, you're absolutely right. It's optimizing, you know, the, the the things that are being streamed. The online audience is the big audience, and we, we just happen to be in here to clap and do some I, things. I wonder if we'll see that the, well I, becoming the norm. I think like sure. virtual, Stu, you know this well. When virtual first came in, nobody had a clue with what they were doing. It was really hard. They tried different things. They tried to take the physical and just jam it into the virtual. That didn't work. They tried doing fun things. They would bring in you know a, a famous person or a comedian, and you know that kind of worked, I guess. But everybody showed up for that and then left. And I think they're trying to figure it out what this hybrid thing is. I've seen it both ways. I've seen situations like this where they're really sensitive to the, to the virtual. I've seen others where it's the FOMO of the physical. People want physical. So, mm. yeah, I think it depends. I mean, reInvent last year was heavy physical. Yeah, what, 15,000 people there. Pretty uh, long keynotes, point. you yeah. know? So maybe Amazon can get away with it, but I think most companies aren't, aren't going to be able to. So, what is the market telling you? What are these insights? What yeah, so, so, so Dave, just talking about Amazon, obviously, you know, in the world I live in, cloud and that discussion of cloud, the journey that customers are going on um, is where we're spending a lot of the discussion. So, you know, it was great to hear in the keynote talked about, you know, our deep partnerships with the cloud providers and what we're doing to help people with, you'd like to call it super cloud, some call it hybrid or multi-cloud. New name, D distributed Ashesh. cloud. Oh? Meta cloud, come on. All right, so you know, Ashesh is my executive, so it, it's wonderful. Um, I love it. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, if I can put on my VR goggles, and that will help me move things. Um, but I, I love like the the, the the partnership announcement with General Motors uh, today, because not every company has the needs of you know software dri driven electric vehicles uh, all over the place. But the technology that we build for them actually has ramifications everywhere. We've been working to take Kubernetes and make it smaller over time. So things that we do at the edge benefit the cloud, benefit what we do in the data center. Uh, it's that, that advancement of science and technology just lifts all boats. So what, what's your take on all this? Uh, the, the, the EV and you know, software on wheels. I mean, Tesla obviously has a huge lead. It's kind of like the Amazon of vehicles, right? It's sort of inspired a whole new you know, wave of innovation. Now you've got every automobile manufacturer kind of going after it. That is the, the future of vehicles. Is it something you followed or something you oh. have an opinion on? Still? Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's driving innovation in, in some ways the way that DOS drove innovation on the desktop. If you remember the 64K DOS limit for years, that was, that was uh, 
the software developers came up with some amazing ways to work within that 64K limit. And then it was, when it was gone, we got bloatware. But it, it actually does enforce a, a level of discipline on you to try to figure out how to make software run better, run, run more efficiently, and that has upstream impacts on on the, the enterprise product. Well, 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 right, so following your analogy, you talk about you know, the enablement to the desktop. Linux was a huge influence on you know, allowing the, the individual person to write code and, and write software, and what's happening in the EV? It's, it's software platform. You know, all of these innovations that we're seeing across industries, it's how is software transforming things? You know, we go back to the Mark Andreessen, and software is eating the world. Open source is the way that software is developed. Who's at the intersection of all those? We, we think we have a nice part to play in that. Um, I loved, uh, Dave, I don't know if you caught at the end of the keynote, uh, you know, Matt Hicks basically said, you know, this isn't, our mission isn't just to write enterprise software. You know, our mission is based off of open source because open source unlocks innovation for the world. And that's one of the things that drew me to Red Hat is it's not just, you know, tech in good places, but allowing underrepresented, uh, you know, different countries to participate participate in uh, what's happening with software and we, we can all move move that ball forward. Well, can we declare victory for open source? Because it's not just open source products, but yeah. everything that's developed today, whether proprietary or open, has open source I, in it. Paul, I, I agree, open source is the development model Period today. Are there some places that there's proprietary? Absolutely. But you know, I, I had a discussion with uh, Deepak Singh, who's been on the, the cube many times. He said, like, our default is, you know, we start with open source code. I mean, you know, that's even Amazon when, when you start talking. I said about they that, built so. the seventy billion dollar business on open <laughs> exactly. source. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't yeah. Necessarily give it back, but that's uh, hey, you know, this is. This. <laughs> All's fair in tech and war. Well, it is interesting how, how the managed service model has sort of rescued open source, uh, open source companies that were trying to do the Red Hat model. No one's ever really successfully duplicated the Red Hat model. A lot of companies were floundering and, and failing, and then the managed service option came along, and now, so now they're all cloud service providers. So the, the only thing I'd say is that there are some other you know peers we have in the industry that are built off open source that, that are doing okay. You know the, the recent examples you know GitLab and HashiCorp both went public. Um, Hashi is doing some managed services, but it's not the majority of, of the, their, their their product. Mm -hmm. Look at a company like Mongo; they've heavily pivoted toward the managed service. It is where we see the largest growth in our area. The the products that we have again with with Amazon, with Microsoft, huge growth, lots of interest. It's one of the things I spend I, most of my time talking I, on. I think but, Databricks is another know. interesting yep. example. Yep. You know, because Cloudera was the now company and they had the sort of open core, and then they had the proprietary piece, and it, it obviously didn't, didn't work. Databricks, when they de you know, developed Spark out of Berkeley, everybody thought they were going to do kind of a similar model, and instead they went to, for all in on managed services. And it's really worked well. I think they were ahead of that curve, and you're seeing it now, is it's what customers want. Well, I mean, Dave, you, you cover the database market pretty heavily. How many different open source database options are there today, um, and you know, that's, one of the things we're solving, when if you look at what is Red Hat doing in the cloud, okay, I've got lots of databases, well, we have something called, you know, it's Red Hat Open Database Access, which is, from a developer, I don't want to have to think about, I've got six different databases, which one, where's the repository, how does all that happen? We give that consistency, it's tied into OpenShift, so it can help abstract some of those pieces. We've got same Kafka streaming, and we've got APIs, so it's frameworks and enablers to help you know, bridge that gap between that the complexity that's out there in, in the cloud uh, and for the developer tool chain. That's a really important role you guys play though because you have this proliferation, you mentioned, you know, Mongo, uh, so, so many others, Presto and uh, uh, Starburst and such, so many other open source options out there now it, and companies, uh, developers want to work with multiple databases within the same application and you're, you have a role in making that easy. Yeah, so, and, and that, that is, if you talk about, the question I get all the time is, you know, what's next for Kubernetes? Dave, you and I did a preview for KubeCon, and it's automation and simplicity that we need to be. It's not enough to just say, hey, we've got APIs. 
It's like Dave, we used to say, we've got standard, great. Everybody's implementation was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So we have API sprawl today. Uh, so it's building that ecosystem. You've been talking to a number of our partners. You know, we are very active in the community and trying to do things that can lift up the community, help the developers, help that cloud native ecosystem, help our customers move faster. Yeah, API is better than scripts, but they got to be managed. Yeah. Right? So, and that's really what you guys are doing that's different. Um, you're not trying to own everything, right? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of antithetical to how, you know, billions and trillions are made in the IT industry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember a few years ago, we talked here and you look at the, the, the size that Red Hat is, and, and the question is, you know, could Red Hat have monetized more if the model was a li little different? And it's like, well maybe, but that's not the why. You know, I, I, I love that, you know, they actually had Simon Sinek come in and, you know, work with Red Hat and that, you know, open unlocks the world. Like, that's the core, it's the why. When I joined, they're like, here's a book of Red Hat, you can get it online, and you know, that, that why of what we do, so we never have to think of, how do we get there? We did an acquisition in the security space a year ago, StackRox, Stack Rocks took yeah. us a year, it's open source. StackRox.io, uh, you know, it's community driven, uh, you know, open source project there because, we could have said, oh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of open source and there's pieces that are open source, but we want it to be fully open source. You just talked to Gunnar about how he's, you know, RHEL 9 based off a of CentOS stream and now developing out in the open uh, with, with, with that model, so. Well, you're always uh, a big fan of Whitehurst's, you know, culture, book, right? It makes a difference. Yeah, the, right? the, the open organization and, right, Red Hat, the culture is special. It's, uh, it's definitely it. interesting. So, uh, first of all, you know, most companies are built with the hierarchy in mind. Uh, you know, I had a friend of mine that when he joined Red Hat, uh, he's like, I don't understand, it's almost like you have like lots of individual contractors all doing their things, because Red Hat works on thousands of projects. But I remember talking to Rackspace years ago when OpenStack was a thing, and they're like, how do you figure out what to work on? Oh, well we hire great people and they work on what's important to them. And I'm like, that doesn't sound like a business. <laughs> and he's like, well, we struggle sometimes for that balance. Red Hat has found that balance because we work on a lot of different projects and there are people inside Red Hat that are, you know, they care more about the project than they do, you know, the business, but there's the overall view as to where we participate and where we productize because we're not creating IP because it's all in open source. So it's the, the monetizations, the relationships we have with our customers, the ecosystems that we build, um, and so that is special. And I'll tell you, the, my, my line has been, Red Hat on the inside is even more Red Hat. The debates uh, and the discussions are brutal. I mean, technical people tearing things apart, questioning things, um, and you can't be thin-skinned. And the other thing is, what, what's great is, new people, we have, you know, I've talked to so many people that started at Red Hat at interns and will stay for you know seven, eight years and they come there and they have as much of a seat at the table and when I talk to new people, it's your job is if you don't understand something or you think we might be able to do it differently, you better speak up because we want your opinion and we'll take that, everybody it's takes that into consideration. It's not like, you know, does the decision go all the way up to this executive and it's like, no, it's, it's done more at the team. The cultural yeah. contrast between yeah. that and your parent, <laughs> yeah. IBM, couldn't be more dramatic. <laughs> and we talked earlier with Paul Cormier about, you know, has IBM really walked the walk when it comes to leaving Red Hat alone? Naturally, he said, he said yes, yeah. but what's your perspective? Yeah, um, are, are there some big blue people across the street <laughs> or something <laughs> I heard at this event? But, but look, um, do we interact with IBM? Of course, you know, one of the reasons that I, you know, IBM and IBM services, both products and services should be able to help get us breadth in the marketplace. There are times that we go arm in arm into customer meetings, and there are times that customers tell us, I like Red Hat, I don't like IBM, and there's other ones that have been like, well, I'm a long time IBM, I'm not sure about Red Hat, and we have to be able to meet all of those customers where they are. So, but from my standpoint, you know, I've got a Red Hat badge, I've got a Red Hat email, I've got Red Hat benefits, so we are fiercely independent. And, you know, Paul, we've done blogs, and there's lots of articles been written is, you know, Red Hat will stay Red Hat. Um, I, I didn't have to happen to catch, you know, Arvind I know was on CNBC today and, and talking at their event, but I'm sure Red Hat got mentioned, 
but yeah, well, he talks about right well, now all the time. But, yeah, but, the earnings but, call. He's he's talking. It, it's exactly. interesting that he's not here right. greeting this audience, right? That's again almost by design, right? But I mean, maybe that's hundreds that's of yards away. Be, yeah, uh, and, 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 uh, and one of the questions emblematic. being in the cloud group is, I'm not out pitching IBM Cloud, you know. If, if a customer comes to me and asks about, we have a deep partnership and IBM will be happy to tell you about our integrations as opposed to, I'm happy to go into a deep discussion of what we're doing with Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. So that's how we do it. It's very different, Dave, from you and I watch really closely the VMware EMC, VMware Dell, and how that relationship, this one is different. We are owned by IBM, but we mostly, it does IBM fund initiatives and have certain strategic things that are done? Absolutely, well, but we are, we, we maintain Red Hat. But there are similarities. I mean, I, I mean, the VMware crowd didn't want to talk about EMC, but they had to. They were kind of forced to, whereas it's, you're not being forced to. Right, you, and, you, and then once Dell came in there, it was pr joint product development. I, I always thought a spin in would have been you know, the more effective, of course, of course, Michael, Dell, and, and Aegon wouldn't have gotten their $40 billion out, but, but, but I think a spin-in was more natural based on where they were going, and it would have been, I think, a more dominant position in the marketplace. They would have had more software, but, but again, financially, it wouldn't have made as much sense, but that whole dynamic was, is different. I mean, but people said that they were going to, look at VMware as a model, and it's been g largely different, because remember, VMware of course was a separate company, now is a fully separate company. Red Hat was integrated, we thought, okay, are they going to get blue washed? We're watching and watching and watching. You had said, well, if, if the Red Hat culture isn't permeating IBM, then it's a failure. And I don't know if that's happening, but it's definitely- It's a long time for well, that It's happen. definitely yeah. been, Preserve. I, I, I mean, Dave, I, I know I read one article at the beginning of the year is, you know, can Arvin make IBM Microsoft Junior? You know, follow the same turnaround uh, that, that, that Satya Nadella uh, drove over there. Um, IBM, I think, making some progress. I mean, I, I, I read and watch what, uh, you know, you, you and the team are all, all writing about it, and, you know, I, I'll withhold judgment on, on IBM. Uh, obviously, there, there's certain financial things that we'd love to see, uh, you know, IBM succeed. We worry about our business, we do our thing, and, uh, you know, IBM shares our results, and they've been, uh, they've been solid. So. Microsoft had such massive cash flow that even Balmer couldn't screw it up. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean, that's just, this is right true, right? Years. I mean, you think about how irrelevant Microsoft was in the conversation during his tenure, and yet they never got really, they, were, they, they maintained a position that, so that when the Nadella came in, they were able to you know, reascend right. and now are becoming you know, that dominant player. I mean, IBM just doesn't have that, that cash flow and that luxury, but I mean, if he pulls it off, he'll be the CEO of the decade. Just the, uh, you mentioned partners earlier. But big concern when the acquisition was first announced was that the Dells and the HPs and the and the such wouldn't want to work with Red Hat anymore. You've sort of been here through that transition. Is that an issue? No, not, not that I've seen. No, I mean the, the 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 hardware suppliers, the the ISVs, the the GSIs are all very important. It was great to see. Uh, I think you had Accenture, uh, you know, mm -hmm. on, on the cube today. Obviously, a very important partner as we go to the cloud. You know, IBM's another important partner, not only for IBM Cloud, but you know, IBM Services, deep partnership with Azure and, and AWS. So, so those, those partners, and from a technology standpoint, the cloud native ecosystem, you know, we talked about it's not just a Red Hat product. I constantly have to talk about, look, we have a lot of pieces, but your developers are going to have other tools that they're going to use. In the security space, no, there is no such thing as a silver bullet. So we have, I've been having some great conversations here uh, already this week with some of our partners that are helping us uh, to round out that whole solution, help our customers, because it has to be, it, it's an ecosystem, and we're one of the, the, the drivers to, to, to help that move well, forward. Well, I mean, we were at Dell Tech World last week, and there's a lot of talk about you know, DevSecOps and DevOps and Dell being you know, more developer friendly, you know, obviously they got a long way to go, but you, you can't 
have that take that posture and not have a relationship with with Red Hat if, if all you got is Pivotal I, and I, I was thrilled VMware to hear the OpenShift mention in the keynote when they of talked course. about what they were doing. How could you not? How could you have any credibility if you're just like, oh, Pivotal, 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 you know, Tanzu, Tanzu, Tanzu's you know it's doing its thing and yeah. well, you know, look, they, they, it's the, a smart strategy. VMware is also a partner of ours, yeah, but of you know that we would hope that with VMware being independent, that does open the door for us to yeah, do because even you guys more have had a Dell. weird relationship yeah. with them, you know, uh, under ownership of EMC and then and then Dell, yeah. right? <laughs> and then the whole IBM thing, but but that's just, it's just a different world now. Ecosystems are forming and reforming, and you know, Dell's building out its own cloud, and it's got to have, a, it's got to, look at Amazon, I wrote about this, I said, can you envision a day where, where Dell actually offers competitive products in its suite, in its service offering? I mean, it's hard to see. You know, they're not there yet, they're not even close, and you know, they have this, High say do ratio, or really, it's a low say do. They say high say do, but you know, look at look at what they did with Nutanix. You look at what, <laughs> what Dell, Dell did with the Cisco relationship. So, it's got to get better at that, and it and it will. I really do believe yeah, that, that I, I, that's I mean, new thinking. And same thing with HPE. And yeah, I don't know about Lenovo, that not as much of an ecosystem play, but certainly Dell and HPE. Yeah. No, yeah. I, 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 absolutely. Michael Dell would always, you know, love to poke at HPE and HP really went very far down the path of their own products. Uh, they went away from uh, you know, their, their services organization that w used to be more like IBM uh, that, that would offer lots of different offerings and very much it was a you know, HP invent. Well, if we didn't invent it, you know, you're, you're not getting yeah, it yeah, from us. It. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, Dell, uh, we'll, we'll see, as, as you said. The, the ecosystems are, are definitely <laughs> forming, converging, uh, and going uh, in, in lots of different directions. But your, so. your position is, hey, we're here. We're here to help. Yeah, we're, we're know, here, we have customers, so. you know, the, 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 one of the best proof points I have is the solution that we have with Amazon. You know, Amazon doesn't do the engineering work to make us a native offering if they didn't have the customer demand because Amazon's driven off of data. So they came to us, they worked with us. It, it's uh, a lot of work uh, to be able to make that happen, but that's, you, you want to make it frictionless for customers so that they can adopt that. Uh, that that's, that's a long path, um, yeah. All right, so evening event. There's a, there's a customer event this evening upstairs in the lobby. Uh, uh, Microsoft is having a little shindig and then sort of a lot of, a lot of customer dinners going on. So. Stu, we'll see you out there tonight. All right, thanks, yeah. We'll be watching the Bruins keynotes somewhere. tomorrow, a lot of good sessions and enablement, and yeah, it, 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 it's great to be in person, to be able to bump some people, meet some people, and you know, hey, I'm still a year and a half in, still meeting a lot of my peers in person for the first time. Yeah, so. and we, that's <laughs> kind of weird, isn't it? Imagine. And then we kick off tomorrow at, uh, at 10 a.m. Actually, Stephanie Chiris is coming on. There she is in the background. She's always a great guest, and uh, Maybe do a little kickoff and have some fun tomorrow. So this is Dave Vellante for Stu Miniman. Paul Gillen is my co-host. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>